So here's my 2014 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport. Came from the factory without the hard top, so it does not have the wire and harness. So today I'm going to be installing that wire and harness. I picked up a hard top on the internet for 700 bucks, and it was pretty scratched up on the panels at least. The rest of the top is pretty good. So I'm currently painting it, hence the mess. Um, so here's the wiring kit that we're going to use today to install. Um, here's the wiring, shifter knob, construction kit, uh, new windshield wiper pump, some zip ties, and some other uh, connections there. Um, this particular kit I got on Amazon. Uh, from Mopar, it was the cheapest one I could find. I don't think there's any aftermarket ones, so just pick up the cheapest one you can. Um, since my Jeep came from factory with heated mirrors, I did not need the temperature knobs to activate the heated mirrors because that also activates the um, back defroster. So there's actually two different kits one for heated mirrors and one without heated mirrors. This one as you can see is for the one with heated mirrors and what I mean by heated mirrors is if you look on right there you can see a little symbol or when you go inside you can see right on that right knob right there it says push and that would be your heated mirrors if you don't have heated mirrors you actually have to replace that little panel of three knobs uh, I'm not going to do that today but it's pretty easy once you get this front panel off that we have to take off anyways. All right, so we have the engine bay open. The hood is resting on the windshield with a rag there in between. And the first thing you want to do is disconnect the negative battery terminal. Um, it was a 10 millimeter bolt and I just pried it off with a flathead screwdriver. Then I have it isolated away from everything inside of a rubber glove. Um, Next we're going to move over to the driver's side and we're going to remove this grommet right there and we're going to run our wiring harness through. Alright guys, I have the little plug out there and the wiring harness ran through. Um, I found out when I was doing this, I thought I could stick this and through the firewall but that was not the case this plug actually didn't fit just to make it more difficult for us so I fed a wire down through the hole into the Jeep and uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see any of this but I have the clutch because I have a manual and I ran it on the very, very far side, so nothing would interfere with the clutch. Um, that seems to be where everything else is, and it's completely out of the way. You can see the harness there, actually, there in the middle. And uh, to wire it through, I electrical taped the ends, so nothing would get hung up on anything. And then I also taped the hose onto it. So now I'm going to fit the new plug into the hole and I'll show you what's next. So guys, I have the harness ran. You can see it's just along the back there. And then the instructions weren't really clear. It kind of showed the wire just coming right through here, over to here. So I wanted it to be a little cleaner, so I actually stuck it under Beneath this thing and it comes out right there um, I'm not going to zip tie it just yet I think I'll wait till the end just in case I need more slack or I need to change this then I don't have to cut zip ties and retie them so next thing we're going to do here is to open up the fuse box there's two clips here you just press them it opens up and we're going to disconnect the power to it um, looks like a little bit bigger I'll let you know and then there's going to be four clips there and there and then on the back here and you're going to pull the whole box out to be able to get to the connector back sides. 
I disconnected the power cable from the box here. Warp started on this side, released these two tabs, pulled up, and then got to this tab, released it, pulled up, and then I was able to get this last one here and pull the whole box out. It would have been a little easier with two people, but still pretty easy on uh, just me. Um, I went ahead and grounded the black wire already onto this bolt. Um, the instruction kit actually shows the wire coming in from this way and then hook it, hooking up to here, right here. So um, that's wrong. Um, I have it coming through here. Right now I just have the wire kind of raveled up down in there and then coming through here. Um, I might clean that up a bit so it's not all bended. I might wrap it around this harness here just so it's clean and not, uh, not in the way. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at all these connections here and we're going to remove connector E to access it uh, so we can tap into it. So here's the back of the fuse box as you can see and I figured out this one is connector E and I already have it out here. Um, I found it out there's actually a little E right here. Um, I don't know if you can actually see it but that's connector E release it there was this latch here onto this pin and you have to push that pull it up pull the lever up all the way to 90 degrees it'll click back into here and then you can pull the connector out I removed the lever latch off these pins just with a flathead screwdriver and got both sides off and pulled the whole clip off then there's these little clips on this black part here that go onto the brown piece and there's four of them and I just lightly loosed them up off the thing with a flathead and I was able to pull the connector off and move it away alright so I already made a mistake looking at the connector and looking at the diagram it was a little different than I expected so I actually tapped into the 32 that was right here that is not the case Looking on the back, there's numbers, and that one's 32. So I'm sorry for all the noise. Apparently, it's an actual nice day here in Pennsylvania, and everyone's cutting their grass. So looking at the connector, it comes in from the left side to the right. The diagram on Mopar that Mopar gives you is a little hard to follow. Um, I thought this one was 32 and this one was 27. That is not the case. This one's actually 32 and this one's 27. Um, to be able to be sure, there's little numbers. You definitely won't see them on here, but they're right on the edge here. Uh, telling you what terminal they are. So please, please double check so you don't have to remove and replace connectors that don't need to be like I did right there. So I removed terminal 32, it is the exact same color as the one you're putting in, so that's how you know you removed the right one, and I have it sitting in there, and now I'm going to get 27 and splice into it. Alright, this was a real pain in the butt. So I stripped the wire that I cut and crimped it on with this little metal thing they have included and that thing is a real pain in the butt it does not want to stay on it, it's almost useless, I've dropped it down there several times, bent it many times and finally have it sitting on there so now I'm about to solder it and heat shrink tube it on alright so my soldering's pretty bad but I got it covered up decently and uh, <clears throat> it was pretty tight, so I felt confident with it. Had the don't forget to have the heat shrink onto the wires before you tap them together and solder them because you're going to be kicking yourself later. And this heat shrink is actually lined with an adhesive. As you can see, <clears throat> as I heated it up, the adhesive came out of both sides. 
and I actually had to take off the tubing that covers up the wires to be able to get to the wire better to be able to solder it so now I'm gonna hook this back up clean it back up and get that connector installed so I found connector G and got it taken apart the diagram that they gave you is kind of misleading as well so this one Connector G came out of this bottom corner over here, where my finger is. Um, it's labeled G onto the side. Well, you're not going to be able to see it. It's labeled on the side. And there's just this lever. You pull the lever and pull the thing out. And then there's actually a red cover on it. And you just slide the cover off. And then there's this back little gasket on there too but you don't really have to take that off. I just found out after I got the thing out. You'll see, there's the pins. Let's get the light on here. And right above the pins, you'll see that there's a tiny, tiny, tiny lever down in there. And you have to wedge it, wedge it in between, something in between the metal and the little plastic thing, and then you can push the terminal out. I use like a thumbtack. Uh, but a longer one to be able to wedge it down in there. So you install it into 31, which this one's a lot easier to read from the diagram. The diagram's correct. Um, it's this row right here where my fingernail is, and you're going to count four over. One, two, three, four. And it may or may not be populated. Mine was, so I had to remove it. If yours is not populated, just install the wire, reinstall the harness, and you're good to go. I have connector G back in and installed. Uh, the wires are cleaned up in there. Uh, I still didn't zip tie them yet. I'll do that at the end. But I have the fuse box or TPIM or TIPAM, whatever they call it, back in. Everything secured. And we're ready to move to the inside. So we're not actually ready to move inside yet. We have to install the hose and the new pump. You can see down there, that's the pump, and we're going to have to replace that. And first, we're going to have to drain the washer fluid. Alright, so I siphoned out the reservoir uh, about as much as I'm going to get. I'm probably going to have some leak out, but that's just the way it's going to have to be. I have it in this bucket, and I use those hoses right there. And, well, I only got a little bit in my mouth, and so... Next, we're going to remove that pump and add the new pump and filter. Alright, so you can see I removed the pump. Um, there was just a connector on top with a button on the, the side facing the driver and it just pulled out, disconnected the hose out of the side of it, and then you just tilt it back and then pull straight up. And you can you might be able to see down there, there's a hole down there and that's where the washer fluid is. So now we're pretty much going to do the same steps to install the new pump. But the new pump comes with a new filter, as you can see, that has to be installed. So here's the new pump with the new filter screen on it. If the filter screen doesn't come out with the old one, chances are it's down in that hole. You're going to want to take that out of that hole and remove it and throw it away because it's not going to be used anymore. To install it, it's about the same way that you removed it. Um, let's see if I can do it with one hand here. Climb the hole down in there. Push down in and lock it back into that snap clip up top there. And then you're going to reinstall the right hose for your front windshield wiper fluid, which is right here, and then you're going to connect your new harness on the other side. Sorry for not showing you guys exactly how to do it. Um, I'm learning as I'm doing it. So what I did is I ran the hose underneath the hose to the front washer fluid, around the horn, beside whatever that thing is, and down and connected and I have the front connected and the wire connector connected. Um, I was going to try to run it behind this little plastic guard right here, but uh, it didn't seem like I had enough length 
and if you look on the side there's not really much room to put it in there so. all right it's starting to get dark because i had to go to the store and get a t50 socket and t45 this one's a t50 so i just popped off the cover on it removed the bolt and leaves you with that sorry for all the noise but i live by a racetrack so it's kind of loud <coughs> So the instructions say to remove this cover on this handle, do not. It does not come off. You can release the seatbelt from this bolt down in here without taking that off. And then the trim piece that I have sitting back in the back seat there comes off with a rivet. One of these guys sitting right there by that ratchet. There's one, two. three and four I still didn't take it out of there yet and that whole panel comes off and the seat belt is still connected so I took this piece off there's a pin right here I just pulled the whole thing up and it came out with it and then there's two pins on the back of it so you just pull out and there's a little slot back there that I ran the wire all the way along here underneath the seatbelt assembly and underneath this carpet there's a little piece of velcro right here connecting connecting the two carpets sorry I have a headlamp on and it's run all the way up here and right now it's just right here but I'll just have to continue it to the back and that would be it for that part so I'm in the front of the vehicle now I removed the trim piece underneath the steering wheel here and uh, all I did was grab right here and pull it came off pretty easy and then for the window controls if you have the window controls if you don't it's the same thing there's a bucket in there and I just got a flathead underneath here pulled pried it out a little bit and it popped right out it was very easy so be careful and now I'm going to remove that connector and remove that bolt right in there as you can see I got the vents out the two vents I took this one out not sure if I have to take it out or not but I did um, there's a trick to get these out and there's actually a video on YouTube explaining how to do it so basically when it's in you're gonna turn the vents slightly to the side and if you can see in there there's a hole and you should be able to see through a hole all the way through the top right there and with a screwdriver you're going to be prying this part down with my finger here you're going to be prying that part down with your flathead and then once you have it prying down you can literally rotate it counterclockwise slightly and it comes right out so next you can see there's a couple clips in here three there should be three around each vent um i'm just going to Give that a yank and it should pull right out and this whole cover should come out. Um, I released this bolt, a bolt on top here underneath this tray, and two bolts under the steering wheel here. There's one here and then one on the other side in this corner up there. And that used a, give me a second. A 930 seconds socket which was very weird I did not see that anywhere but that's what I got them out with so at this point those who do not have the heated mirrors option are going to have to remove this piece and replace these three um, knobs and pretty much all you do is this pulls out there's a couple clips on the sides here um, and then you can release the connectors and then there's a panel you release some screws and then you could replace this whole little panel of three knobs and then you just replace it back in um, but I'm going to continue on to the instrument cluster so remove that feed the wire up into there and then eventually get this knob out and replaced okay so I released four bolts off the instrument panel they're in all four corners there and they're the same 930 seconds that we used to remove the top lid and the switches here. 
Um, basically, this can just pull out. Sorry, I'm trying to do it with one hand. And there's some connectors on the back that you're going to disconnect. Alright, so I fed up this purple white wire. I used wire again. Fed it through this back hole down. And it came out the side there. I don't know how well you can see that. But I have it wired beside that plate there and out all the way up so out of the way of everything and now we're gonna have to tap that wire into the necessary connector so it turns out none of these connectors are actually labeled so um, it's definitely not this black one it's either this brown or this black one with one wire going into it. I think it's this black one with one wire because it's a purple and white wire and it's a purple and white wire and we're supposed to remove one that's in that exact position to place this wire. The camera died so I'm not too sure where I left off at um, but basically I pulled the, this little white piece off the front of this black connector and was able to remove the terminal out of the front of the connector since I pretty much broke the wire anyways there was no saving it sorry about that my head lamp is in the shadow making a shadow um, so I'm gonna get the new terminal installed and put everything back together alright here's where the instructions are vague yet again so to remove this upper and lower shroud there's three bolts underneath but it doesn't tell you where or what they use in order to remove it well I found out it's a T15 and you're not gonna be able to use a ratchet so there's one right there in the middle and then there's a hole right there by the lever and then a hole on this side and of course there's a T15 bolt up there and nothing fits up there so, luckily I had this screwdriver right here from fixing phones and computers that magically fit up there. But, you know, just got the lever out. It was one Phillips head screw back here. So, it would be right on the back, right there. It's at a little bit of an angle. Um, it's just a Phillips head and you need a small screwdriver to be able to fit it in between the gap. And then I unhook the wiring harness. And now all I have to do is place this new lever in and then put everything back together. And uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that because, I mean, it's just the reverse of the steps that you did to take it apart. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning too. Um, so after you get everything back together, you are going to have to go to any dealer and have them flash your ECU or computer so it knows that there's a hard top and then you can use the defroster and wiper and the fluid. Um, without that, they won't work. Um, I contacted my dealer already. They said they can do it and they said it would be about $45 or $48 or something like that to do it. Um, I just have to make an appointment on when I'm going to when I want to have it done and um, I'll go in and they should be able to do it within an hour, so I shouldn't have to drop up my off my vehicle at all um, And that's it. Um, thank you for watching